ericmwathethmother.com. So what I wanted to do is just do a quick, quick video as a follow-up to yesterday's video here. And the reason for the video, to be honest with you, is as a visual explanation of how markets respond. But please, 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 please understand that even though I could see the possibility of the market turning around, again, this is going to be part two as a follow-up of this video. So for this to make sense, please watch this video. And back to what I was saying, please, please understand that there's no way, no way I would have predicted that the market would respond with this big drop after the video. So don't, I hope it doesn't sound like, oh yeah, I, I called it. No, I did not call it. I was just showing the probability. Now, go back to the chart here and the market could have very easily, because I don't control the market, we don't control the market, other people do. The market could have easily chosen to move higher above the blue line, which I had drawn as of yesterday. And this would have been pretty much a buy signal. If the market had moved above the line, we would have been seeing the market up 300 points or 20 points. Who knows? So please understand that this is not me saying, look, I called it. No, I did not know. Did not know. But just want to show you how the market responded is the point of this video. So let's go to the technicals and understand that it's always a measure of what could happen, what might happen, but nobody really knows unless you're on the inside. But what I was talking about, the possibility did play out. We can see a break here from the line, which gave us that the high is somewhere there. We have uniform activity here, which gave us those highs. And as of yesterday, I was speculating the market wanted to do this, and it did. So off that high, as of late afternoon yesterday, when the Dow was up 150 points, it ended up closing the day up 37. So that was a good place to have gone short. Right now, we see this pullback intraday, and it's of a, you know, a good size because the market is moving below 30.9 on the hourly. That's why we are seeing the pullback of substantial size because the markets are moving below 30.9 on the hourly time frame. Now let's take a look at what is the look. If we take a look at the S&P 500 futures, and we can see what I was talking about yesterday was the possibility even though, of course, I did not know that it would end up being that's what the market would respond to. I was drawing this line here, talking about the possibility of using the line for a reason to place a shot around here because the market was coming back to backtest that line. There was evidence because the NASDAQ was already showing resistance that the market would hit that level and pull back, which is exactly what happened. Now, of course, there was no way of knowing that this would be the magnitude of the drop. And again, this is pretty much from the lows here. We'd seen the market respond of those highs, double top rejection of those highs, rejection here of the highs from yesterday when I recorded the previous video, which is now part one. This is part two. And of course, we can see moving below on the RSI here, RSI moving below 30.9 means a big down hour as long as the RSI is below 30.9. Last but not least, take a look at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ was the first one to give us confirmation because if you recall, we had seen the NASDAQ responding to this line. This was a big tell because the NASDAQ itself had come back to the top of this line and was showing rejection the interpretation of that was it was best to prepare yourself for a move lower because of this resistance. Now at the time, the Dow was up 150 points or so. So we can say from the highs of yesterday to today's low, market has lost, the Dow has lost about 450 points, maybe more, right? And it all all stemmed from what looked like very innocent resistance on the NASDAQ, 
when it hit this line here. And let me zoom in so we can see that line more clearly. Right? So once we saw the NASDAQ come to this level, that was a tell. All we can do in the market is use visual cues to identify levels where we, we can place a trade here and there, see what happens. Right? Now keep in mind right now if the NASDAQ, oh, you can't see that, but if the NASDAQ goes on to drop below 30.9, on the hourly if it does it suggests that what we are seeing here as a down move is gonna expand even lower hope that makes sense if the Nasdaq goes on to move the hourly RSI below 30.9 it's gonna mean that this move here is going to have to go much lower so that's the risk for the day is that if the Nasdaq drops below 30.9 on the hourly, expect a bigger down day than what we are seeing right now. Now I want to show one other chart. I personally think that if we take a look at the VIX, maybe the tell was the fact that the market would have a substantial move was the fact that the VIX was trading in the teens. So whenever we see the VIX trading in the teens, it means that the smaller time frames are more reliable. Or, let me put it this way, the smaller time frames become more important for turn points. So when the VIX is trading, let's say, in this region, the market tends to be slow and the bigger time frames are controlling. Now, once the VIX starts trading in the teens, let's call it somewhere in this region, and of course, the higher the VIX, the more the market is going to be relying on smaller time frames like the hourly charts and so, and so on. So in other words, the higher the VIX, the more the smaller time frames become relevant. And the lower the VIX, the more the bigger time frames become relevant. Hope that makes sense. So what I can say here is on the short term, I think... It all depends on whether the VIX can break out above the recent daily closing high at 14.79. So if the VIX can break out on the daily and stay above that price, then that's indication that the market is going to still continue being under downside pressure. If the VIX fails to break out successfully, right now it is struggling to hold above that level. So if it struggles to hold above 14.79 then the market around here will stabilize so that's how i'd look at this short term this being a one year daily to see this clearly let's take a look at a six months daily and you can see right there this morning we were trying to break out so the key here short term to determine strength is if the vix is above 14.79 expect the market to continue being under tremendous downside pressure. If the VIX is unsuccessful in breaking out, if this fails, then the market should stabilize around current levels. And again, the higher the VIX, the more we can rely on the smaller time frames. Let's just keep that in mind. So the higher the VIX, the more we have to rely on the smaller time frames for big turnaround situations. Otherwise, the lower the VIX, the more we are going to have to go back to a slow grinding market where the big time frames are more controlling. So let me conclude this video by going back to the hourly charts. And the key here, in my opinion, is what I discussed earlier. Let me see if I can show this. It's kind of hard. All right, we can see here that the NASDAQ right now is getting closer and closer to moving below 30.9 on the hourly. So short term, the key for whether we see a big drop, continued drop intraday, is whether the RSI on the hourly drops below 30.9. Keep in mind on this time frame, on the smaller time frames, I am using RSI setting of 26 just in case it looks a little different from yours let me end right there this is eric moore with mother.com 
Enjoy your weekend. As always, good luck, peace, and blessings. E-A-C-S.